Ben Shapiro and Russell Brand recently had a conversation where Ben Shapiro explained the gospel, the simplicity in the gospel, and I want to react to that, so let's basically jump into it. Christianity says you believe the thing, therefore you do the thing. Judaism says you do the thing, therefore you believe the thing. I like the way he outlines the two distinctions, and he's obviously going to speak about the differences, and he, he obviously mentions how there's a slight problem with the Christian view of things. Whenever we come back to these two things, we're going to be dealing with what seems like belief by faith opposed to belief by works. Whenever you're dealing with works in order to build a relationship or to be justified or anything along those lines, you're always going to fail. And that's the, the problem from a works-based salvation perspective. Whereas when we flip it and we think about the Christian worldview, I'm going to have faith and my faith in God is going to propel me encourage me to take an action i'm going to now live my life for christ christ is the one that i'm looking to every single day and as i continue to keep my mind on christ i'm going to remember every single day this isn't about my works to have a positive relationship with god everything i get from god everything i have in a relationship with god comes from my belief in christ and that belief which Ben Shapiro is going to talk about as the problem, is going to propel you every single day. Let's continue and hear what he says next. Take the prescription and you will experience God. Right. Christianity, experience God, experience Christ and because in your you're heart. doing now, that, then you'll do the good thing. you do the right thing. Right. And so the, yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the problem, cool. the, the, the reward of that is that the access point in some ways for Christianity is a lot easier, right? Ben Shapiro just so nicely outlined the simplicity of the gospel. He says, the easy thing about what Christians believe, there's no barrier. We look at the cross, we look at what Christ did and say we can now walk right in to the throne room of grace. And this is what people who believe that they're justified by faith realize. I remember when I started to come more and more to grips with what justification by faith actually is. I was a little afraid. It was like, but if Christ is the one that justifies me, if my salvation is hinged on believing what he did for me, what if I just become rogue? and start living waywardly. That was my fear. But then I started to realize, if Christ did this for me, why wouldn't I want to live my life every single day, serving him, telling other people about what Christ has ultimately done for me? Genuinely, truly walking into it encourages you as a believer, as a child of God, to walk with him and allow him to live and shine light through you, opposed to many people like Ben's going to speak about in a moment, who are not genuinely realizing what Christ has ultimately done for you and for me. So many people can miss it. It's that simple. But let's continue. Experience a transcendent moment. Yeah. And now the transcendent moment is supposed to animate your life. The danger is transcendent moments disappear real fast, right? You have a transcendent moment and right now you're feeling God. And then five minutes from now, you're not feeling God. Uh, right? I, mean, I agree with Ben Shapiro and what he's saying. The only thing I would say which is different, and this is how many people today misunderstand we don't believe we're saved based on a feeling it's not just a feeling it's a belief it's something we look at and we say christ you went on the cross you paid the price for the sins of the world i believe in that i put trust in in christ it goes beyond a feeling it's a decision faith isn't irrational it's not a you know what this is my license to, to go and commit sin this is um me just trusting in this transcendent moment because what Ben's saying is true. You can have the most spiritual moment ever, but then tomorrow, that moment's not going to be there. Elijah, for example, was the one on Mount Carmel who had a great deliverance in Israel, but he was the one, not long after, petrified, running away because he thought someone was going to kill him. If we base our faith based on just a feeling, like Ben is speaking about in this clip, there is a drawback, there is a problem. But when you truly believe, when you understand the, the, the truth, the simplicity, the heart of the gospel, you know it's not just about a feeling. When I'm feeling good, I'm going to serve. But when I'm feeling bad and down, I, I, I'm not going to serve. No, no matter what's happening, true faith will continue to persevere and move forward. Because like Ben is saying, feelings change over and over again. Before I even continue to play it, just notice at the start of where I played it, it was obviously, like I said, bring in the differentiations, right? So you have to obviously bear in mind that he's saying this is a potential um, drawback in what we believe is the simplicity of the gospel. So in contrast, this is obviously the opposite and obviously would be a positive in the fact that the life he lives as a Jew is based not on a feeling, but at the same time by working in order to build and have that relationship with God. Let's continue. That's the message of, of the book of Exodus, where they receive the, the Torah, the, the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, and five minutes later, they're building a golden calf, right? The transcendent <laughs> moment ends, you're building a golden calf. And it's true. Like I gave the example of 
Elijah on Mount Carmel, Ben's giving an example of the Israelites on Mount Sinai, right? Which is a good example and proves the point he's making. You're idiots! So, right, we're not it? listening. I, exactly. Well, no, it's this now. It's this girl. It's this, I think we're going to go with the golden cow. Yeah, exactly. What the Talmud? <laughs> I've just explained to you. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that gap has been sort of closed in the sense that Christianity then re-ritualized a lot of things, right? He says he feels like that gap has closed a little bit because Christians have re-ritualized. And it's, it's not that we re-ritualized anything. The truth of the matter is, genuine gospel truth, like James says, should be seen by men. And this is a mistake many people make when they look at Romans chapter 4 opposed to James chapter 2. People think there's a contradiction, but they're speaking about different things. Paul is speaking about justification before God, whereas James is speaking about justification before men. The way in which other people see that we're believers is by our actions. That's because we're imperfect. We don't know all things. But with God's perspective, God looks at our heart, right? The faith that we have. And that's where he can see because he can see through all of the mirage, all, all of the smoke and mirrors and can genuinely see what you believe in your heart. So let's listen to some of the examples he says Christians have now brought back in. Still go to church, even if they're not feeling it that day, or, mm -hmm. or they still are, are enjoying to give charity, even if they're not feeling it that day. When I was watching this, I thought this, this conversation was so powerful. And this is because he explained how many people believe the gospel actually is. That you just have this feeling, that feeling supposed to, to last forever. Or when you read through the gospels, when you read through the New Testament, you realize that just like it was in the Old Testament, a relationship with God goes up and down from a physical perspective. You have highs, you have lows emotionally. But your decision, your belief, which isn't just based on feeling good, this feel good factor, will encourage you and motivate you by the power of the Holy Spirit to do the deeds, to fellowship regularly, to love your neighbor as you love yourself, to do as Christ would do. But at the same time, in his explanation, like so many people, miss the simplicity of the gospel and mistake it for something else. And let's just look at one verse here from Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Why? For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Christianity doesn't say don't do works. Christianity says and believes that works do not save us. If you like this video, maybe you like when I reacted to Kevin Samuel silencing this Christian lady with the Bible. It was actually a good one. God bless and I'll see you soon.